IJ, and I'm here tonight to explain the IJ's endorsement process. Um, I am here because Brad Breithop, our editorial page editor, is in Maui right now. So he's. Uh, Got to use it. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Anyway, the um, first I'll explain um, the makeup of the editorial board. Um, I'm, we have three standing members at the IJ, myself, Brad, who's our editorial page editor, and our publisher, who is David Rounds. We have one rotating citizen member um, who does not vote on our endorsements. So we've always shielded our public members um, from that process, just we figure, we figure a lot of them are very active in the community, and it's just not fair to subject them to you know anything as far as that. Um, we endorse in nearly all contested local races, and um, we will try to make our endorsements by the time absentee ballots are coming back in. It's getting more difficult for our, um, our endorsement process is getting much more compressed now because of the you know absentee ballots, mail-in ballots are becoming much more prevalent. From what, 60% now, 55%? 55%. So it used to be we could wait uh, until the final days before the election to finish all our endorsements and get them in the paper, and now we really have to get them out almost three weeks before, before the election. So it's, it's, it's much more compressed, which makes it a little more difficult just for scheduling all the, all the interviews we do as part of our process, which takes me to the next, um, next point is that we, um, the basic format for our um, for our endorsement process is we we invite all candidates in contested um, elections to come in for group interviews for each race. Um, Brad will be scheduling those um, group interviews. I know there's several people here who've been part of that process in the past. Um, it's not really a debate; it's more of a kind of an informal question and answer answer process. We find it very valuable, even though we know a lot of the candidates and we've covered them over the years and, and know them personally, to see all the candidates in a group setting. Usually lasts about an hour. You have a couple of minutes to um, say who you are and why you're running. And then we, we typically talk about the um, key issues in each race. And it just kind of goes where it's going to go and everyone gets a chance to talk and it usually ends up being about an hour. And, um, and we find them very helpful just because it's really good to see people thinking on their feet, um, reacting to other candidates. It's usually fairly civilized. Every once in a while, something gets a little testy, but uh, um, but usually it's, it's not a debate. You know, we try we try and keep it from being a debate. Really, it's, it's really it's more of a fact-finding mission for us. Um, we often have, um, in addition to the members of the editorial board, Dick, who is not a member of our editorial board, even though he likes to think of himself as one. Um, <laughs> Dick often shows up, um, just gathering information for his column. Um, sometimes each reporter, the reporters who are covering each race, will come. Sometimes they'll come. Sometimes they won't. If um, often they're, you know, they're doing their stories, often the preview stories for the for each race, or de you know, developing stories on the race. So sometimes they'll come in. Sometimes they won't. So you'll be hearing from. Um, but reporters again are not a member of the editorial board. They're just there to gather information. So that's usually about who. That's about you know anyone who shows up for the for our, our hearing or our meetings. Um, we try to. Um, Next year, we're going to try and get all our um, endorsement editorials in the paper um, as the absentee ballots come start coming back in. It's going to be a little tougher this year. It's, it's Brad's gone for a couple of weeks on vacation, so when he gets back, he will be uh, co contacting all the candidates to set up our um, group interviews. They'll probably be between September 26th and around October 15th, and then he'll be turning editorials around. We also run near the um, end of the campaign, right before Election Day, we will run a chart of all our endorsements in all the races several days, usually the last week or so, just to, it'll be online too, but we do that just to, because often people will call and say, you know, you know, where did you stand on? We won't rerun the editorials, we'll just run, you know, who we've endorsed. Um, what else? <laughs> Since we've been talking about presentation and, and what to wear and things like that, we, 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 we take, um, um, photos of all the candidates to run with our preview stories in the paper. So we tend to take those at the, um, so you're not surprised when people come in for the group interviews. Um, so if you want to follow the advice on what to wear for a picture. So um, and we, we only use photos that we have taken to run um, with our stories of, of all the candidates. We figure it's just fair that way. Um, and it's, you know, it's a policy we've had for a while. So just don't be, I don't want anybody to be surprised when you show up for the, uh, for the candidate interviews, if you choose to do so, that we're going to be a photographer will be there to take pictures. Um, so dress 
appropriately, as, as we've been saying. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's basically the, uh, I was trying to keep this short because I know we're running a little late here. Um, again, we really, we love contested races because that's how we get to know the candidates and that's how the issues get discussed. It's, I think contested uh, uh, races are just the, you know, the, the foundation of our democratic system. So um, I know Eva probably feels differently. She would rather not have to run against someone, but I think it's really a, it's really good for the candidates and it's even better for all the voters to hear what's going on and have to have the, all the candidates explain you know, where they stand and their positions and defend their positions too if they're running again. Um, we just really like that process even though um, with big elections and a lot of races on the editorial board it gets to be, there's been periods when we had a month of, um, of literally every day of the week having uh, group, interview, group, group interviews of candidates and some days two groups coming in. So it is a, um, it's something we take very seriously. We think the, um, we hope that all candidates will um, accept our invitation to come in and, and, you know, I know it's tough with schedules sometimes, but it's, um, it's really hard to try and schedule all the candidates. Sometimes you'll have six, seven, eight candidates for big council races or water boards and things like that. And um, so bear with us when Brad's trying to contact everyone um, and trying to get them in at the same time. But we really think it's a really important part of our process. We take um, endorsements and, and local campaigns very seriously. And um, it's also a lot of fun. So, does anybody have any questions about uh, the IJ's endorsement? When do you think you get your endorsement out? Um, well, I think someone said that absentee ballots are going out the first week of October. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Well, second week. So I think um, it will. Some will be done sooner than others because we don't run them all. We tend to run one a day for a while. Um, we would hope to. Oh boy, let's see. Um, I, I would hope that we would have all our endorsements in the paper, um, you know, at least two weeks before the election. So it's going to be tough this year. It seems like everything's a little more compressed for some reason. Yeah, Chris? Can you share with us any of the values that you prize in a candidate? Honesty. <laughs> showing, showing up for our interviews. <laughs> uh, pardon, too. The, um, um, being succinct is very important to us. So we like, we like, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm often the one who has to monitor the, you know, I've, um, I used to be the editorial page editor for a couple of years and running uh, candidate uh, group interviews and trying to keep, um, especially the experienced candidates who love to talk. And um, so trying to keep them to two minutes is, is very difficult. So that's, so I would say, you know, say what you have to say and, and, and the shorter your answers is the more things we get to talk about. So if someone takes 15 minutes to talk about one thing, it's just depriving not only everyone else have a chance to talk because we try to hold them to an hour, but also fewer issues get covered and we want to touch on all the major. So I would say being prepared is really important and coming in and uh, being, succinct. being succinct, yes. Is that enough, Chris? Thank you. Yeah. Can we hear some Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Let, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I've been on both sides of this aisle. I've had an opportunity to run for public office uh, many times. I served uh, 12 years as a member of the Mill Valley City Council and Mayor when I was a San Franciscan. And you mentioned something, you know, I hear the names. Diane, I remember Diane's first campaign because I was active in campaigns in those days. I interned at Senator George Moscone's office. I mentioned Milton Marks. Senator Moscone would like to taunt Senator Marks if he had nothing else to do at a good time. It was a lot of fun. Senator Marks in those days was Republican, by the way. Uh, and so those were the old days in San Francisco. And I ran for park director in San Francisco. 14 candidates, I actually come in fourth, which is pretty good, but still out of the money. Uh, moved to Marin and uh, had an opportunity to run for the city council in Mill Valley. And I said three terms on that and served on the Golden Gate Bridge Board. Worked with a lot of consultants, worked with a lot of campaigns, mostly Democratic campaigns over the years, uh, and uh, went through the endorsement process personally. And now I have the privilege of actually attending and asking questions uh, uh, at the IJ endorsement process just up the press Democrat talking to the folks up there about their endorsement process, which is slightly different. The Sun has the process of scope papers, historically did not endorse uh, the Novato Advance. Wood, if you're from Novato, and see any Novato candidates here, uh, except for our city advisor. Um, endorsements. First of all, all endorsements are is somebody vouching <coughs> for you as a candidate. Uh, the, the concept of endorsements in a small town is crucial. And not just with the big daily newspaper, but with your friends and neighbors. If a guy puts up a house sign and says, Leslie Wachtel on the house sign, 
That person is in, not just putting up a health sign, they're making something very difficult today. They're making a personal endorsement of a candidate. And you know, most Americans kind of want to duck the whole process of politics. But when somebody puts up a house sign, not only are you endorsing a person, you're putting their front yard around their house saying, I'm for that person. That's a big deal. That's an endorsement. And every one of their friends drives by it. None of them ask them about it, but they all see it. And let me assure you, the tendency, if they know no one else, is to vote for that candidate. That's an endorsement. Endorsement by the IJ or another newspaper or some very large community operation is very important in the smaller races. President of the United States, very few people pick up the paper and say, either the IJ or the New York Times, or you name it, has endorsed somebody for president, United States Senator, Governor. That really doesn't happen very much. Going down the line, you can question, but what it does do for middle level candidates is give their donors a source of confidence that there is some backing for this. Go down to county supervisor, all the more so, but city council, special purpose districts, school districts, things like that, most people have absolutely zero idea of who's running, and they need some kicker somewhere along the line to give them at least a spark plug to get them interested in it, and a serious endorsement can do that. Now, there's the other tendency in politics. God knows I've worked with candidates, that get, you know, talk about catching candidates, we used to say the person that sits next to the candidate or the guy in the back, or I used to drive the car, you know, they, when you're really young, that's the greatest spot in politics, be the driver. And there's a chase to go to all these groups that endorse. And I can remember a night in Marin County where I happened to go to one of them just because I was covering it. And there's about 35, 40 people at the endorsement session. It tends to be you run to the same 35 or 40 people at multiple endorsement sessions. That week. And it's the same guys looking at different races. And I always remember that night later, I had to go to the auditorium at Marin Catholic High School where there was a fundraiser. And there were 400 people in the auditorium. I, I knew a lot of them. I knew that they were older. I knew that each and every one of them, if there was an earthquake on election day and the flood came <laughs> and everything else happened, they were voting. I knew that. That I knew. And I thought to myself, it's interesting that all the folks at the 35 person candidates night, I didn't see any of them at the 400 guys out there on Sir Francis Drake Boulevard. And I said to myself, Boy, I think I know a lot about politics. This is telling me something. The one guy that shows up, man or woman that shows up there, they got a score. We forget that. We get into the race because the uh, so-and-so endorsement session, whatever it is, left, right, in between, neighborhood, it, 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 there was something driving about it. We gotta get the, we gotta get, oh, we didn't get that endorsement. Nobody ever hears about it before or since. So we be somewhat selective when you go into the race looking at endorsements. Now again, the individual endorsement, community endorsement, that's what you really want, however it's constituted. Most of you folks are running in small towns. Uh, San Rafael's a small town for all intents and purposes. God knows Fairfax is, Mill Valley, uh, uh, Larksburg, San Anselmo, these are small towns. You cannot win without a broad range of people endorsing you. Whether that's done on an individual basis, my name's Gary Phillips' is ad, Leslie Wachtel's website I checked the other day, Terrifically, I thought Leslie was running for the state senate. I, mean, there was something on that I, thought, I, I thought that Noreen Evans would be a little concerned if she saw it, but that's another story. Uh, uh, Gary has one coming up. Uh, came one last week. He's got a big endorsement this week with Al Brown. Uh, uh, those things are an imprimatur, the, the sign of thumbs up. It's okay, uh, and, and and clears a lot. But you don't get those long list of people by accident. You only get them because you have a history of community involvement. And, and everybody that moves into a town and expects that they're going to have that kind of list tomorrow, I mean, Chris has been in Fairfax for a zillion years. He knows a lot of people in Fairfax. But if you just move in or you've never been involved, you're not going to have those. And, and I, I spoke to a group last week at the Press Democrat of people thinking you're running for, con uh, for office, any office, at some point in time. And my advice was to them, if you haven't done that, don't run this year, don't run next year, build that up. You need to build those endorsements up. Uh, other endorsements in the county that make some sense, um, depends what you're running for. I'm gonna tell you a story which is gonna be counter to what everything a consultant will tell you. Uh, I ran for re-election uh, one time in Mill Valley. I was very involved in infrastructure and the Marin Builders Exchange, Peter Argoni was the guy, came to me and said, Dick, we're all for you because you're an infrastructure guy. Uh, we can do one of two things for you. We'll give you our maximum donation or we won't do anything except endorse you. 
I said, Pete, that'd be just great. You don't want to be endorsed by the Friend Builders Exchange in a place like Mill Valley. And so sometimes pick and choose. It's a great opportunity. I wish you all the luck in the world. If you come to the IJ, I hope to be at the meeting to see you and, uh, and have a lot of fun. It's, if you don't have fun doing this stuff, don't do it. <laughs> Thank you.